Then let's put it up. Going up in five, four, three, two, one. Good luck. To get the sheen off. Yeah, he's it's better than sanding it. Yeah. Wow. Well, why don't you just explain well, it, man? <laughs> you know what's funny is I actually learned that from one of your videos. Wow. So uh, he's really going for it, ladies and gentlemen. You'll have to see, show him the electronics bay after we get this situated. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, in case you didn't know, instead of sanding or peeling cardboard tubes, you can use a damp paper towel and it takes the glycine sheen off. And that's a fun rhyme, if nothing else. Glued this all together and it's now head-end dual deployment. And it's going to be flying on a six grain 54 <laughs> snap ring motor for its very first flight. Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you're consistently cutting the same distance. That's what I'm trying to do. Roughly. So rule number one of fiberglassing, whatever side has the rough cuts is the side you put down first because it gets wrapped around. But I'm gonna take that cloth and put it over with the mylar. Just start wetting that out. And put it on as straight as you can. And then just very carefully seal the edges. Got to be careful not to pull it and like, uh, you know, reshape it. Mm -hmm. It really is harder to do composite work on a smaller rocket than a giant one. But there you go, mylar wrapped. It's like a one and three quarter wraps of fiberglass. <laughs> I wish you guys could feel how nice these came out. There's a little bit of a dry spot there, but overall, pretty dang good. Yeah. It's not its not even a dry spot. It's just a spot where there wasn't enough epoxy for the mylar to put like a, a layer over it, but it feels like glass. Yeah. So, obviously you'll have to sand those for fillets, but you won't have to sand the whole thing, and then you'll just have a nice paint surface. Mm -hmm. And then show them your electronics bay. Since we're going head and dual deploy, yep. Stratologer CF. Half the comments just got jealous you own <laughs> yeah. one of those. I own two. <laughs> I do two, actually. Maybe three. I can't remember. Taylor has like five. That Nine volts on the back because we stay not running those lipos, and yep. you already know he's <laughs> twisting and taping wires. Yep. He's going to be flying it head and dual deploy because uh, you got about two inches of room between the end of the case and the eye bolt well, floor. Well, it's going to be like that probably. Yeah, but still, it'll be about two inches of room between the end of the case and the eye bolt. I forgot to bring that Kevlar over, but I have some quarter inch Kevlar you can use. But yeah. It's gonna be pretty rowdy. Yeah, hopefully. What are you calling this thing? Are you gonna like sleeper mode it and just paint it white and put the wrap on it and just leave it? I could. That'd be kind of sick. Yeah. Taylor put the LDRS 40 thing on his carbon one. A picture it is. It looks, it looks sick. It's pretty sick, but. This is important that you oh, don't yeah. see it. Yeah, don't worry about that. You can't see it till you're right up on it, obviously. Yeah. You like the socks, dude? Oh, <laughs> these ones? <laughs> <laughs> All right, take a peek. <laughs> oh, that's he was smart. like, he was like talking about oh, so how good. funny it would be to bring it into the hotel room. And I was like. I don't think we could bring it into the hotel yeah. room. I was like, I don't think you're thinking of the correct scale here. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, you could, like, one piece at a time, but we couldn't do anything with it one piece at a time. Yeah. We'll make Matt sleep like, in it. We'll put, yeah, the rocket sleep in the bed. <laughs> Hey, thanks, Tim. Oh. <laughs> As you may have gathered from the previous clip, I made all of the vinyl for our 12 inch rocket that we dubbed the Hashlingy Slasher. I only had enough of the oil slick color changing vinyl to give this one shot so each of these stack graphics was laid out letter by letter by hand and it took me several hours but I wanted them to look perfect 
and this gratuitous shot with the sun coming into the garage makes it look way way better than it actually was. All said and done though, everything came out looking pretty good. As far as finishing touches on the rocket, putting the vinyl on was all we had to do to get it ready for flight. Obviously though, we were going to need some propellant. So in this time lapse, you can see myself and Taylor putting together the three K1000s and three L1520s. Not included in this clip was us putting together an M2500. However, upon arrival at Airfest, we decided to put an N3300 in the center instead given some issues that Aerotech M2500s have been having. After letting the glue dry overnight, Taylor slid all the motors into the cases while I was working. The final step was for us to carefully pack the 28 foot man rated parachute into a custom made deployment bag from Gene over at Fruity Shoots. You can see Taylor's got this down to a science, very meticulously getting each of the shroud lines properly packed in the bag so we can have a nice smooth deployment of our big giant parachute. All that's left to do now is put the thing in the van and make our way from Kansas City to legendary Rocket Pasture in Arconia, Kansas. Fifty-four. We have Shane Harris from Boise, Idaho, flying a fusion rocket. On a da, 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 John Clifton K300. Da, da, da. All right, so Clifton uh, K300 motor works. Might be a slow burner. Uh, he's going to strat a logger on board, expecting 12,000 feet. Good luck, Shane and John. Pad number 54. Should be exciting. Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one, ignition. Smoking. This ought to be fun. <clears throat> Out on pad 84, we have Braden Carlson from Boise, Idaho. He's going to fly a rocket called, we think, Schnooky Pudsy. Um, yeah, 65 pound rocket. And the motor is made by the inestimable <clears throat> John Clifton. It is an N, it's a no 1100. Uh, the total impulse is a bunch. The burn time is a few. The propellant name is Black Diamond. We got that part. Uh, it's not a sparky motor. Um, this should be spectacular one way or another. So <laughs> let's put Schnooky Pussy up in the sky if we can um, in five, four, three, two, one. Watch. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Schnooky putsy. Nice job, guys. Well done. Remember, it's easier to drill new, drill new shear pin holes every time. We didn't heat it like Matt said. <laughs> we were reducing weight. It's just going to go even more mock. Even more mock. Even yeah, more mock. that's correct. That time, gentlemen. Yeah, here we go. It's getting close. God help us all.
little breezy, flight cards in my hand, and it's going up right now. And Braden Carlson from Kansas City, more or less. And uh, they've got a big rocket. It weighs it's a scratch built 190 pound rocket with the range sitting down with the central end is in nope 3300 L 1520s and three K 1000s. Can you say gold? All blue should be spectacular. The name of the rocket is the um, <laughs> the Hash Slinging Slasher. It is a four time upscale of a Wild Man Punisher. Uh, it's got everything you can imagine on board: video tracker, da da da. Um, Oh, I did light it. Is it only the L's? Two K's and two L's. But all from across from each other. Yeah. So we have a K1000 L1520 and an N3300. 5,000 plus 7,000. It went 2,400 feet. Sounds like a baby. Yeah. Pretty late, but we proved the rocket itself works. Yeah. You might have packed a big shoot. Yeah. And it came uh, out really nicely. Yeah, it was beautiful. We got to see it nice and close too. Joy! All right. All right. The big deal's over. Now we can just have fun. Fun, yeah. No more stress. Pause tart, what are you flying? Uh, I 540. Uh, Formula, as usual. The workhorse. Yeah, the thing, that's flight number nine on that? Uh, yeah. Insane. Yeah. This is five. I've had this rocket for. All right. Pad 31, we got Preston. I'm gonna fly a fat boy. From and an M3700. Maybe. No, definitely. Maybe. Definitely. And I'm gonna put the new Aerospike G615 in my 3 inch Punisher. It's all prepped, I just need to put the motor together. All right, well, here's the Aerospike. It's pretty cool. Um, I got a lot less excited about this motor when I found out you have to take it apart at the pad to put the igniter in. <laughs> so, all right, Matt, how was that experience for you? There's a lot of work to it. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be worth it. I kind of didn't realize that like in doing, taking the nozzle out, you have to run the igniter through the nozzle and then through the other part of the nozzle and then through the O-ring, then through the closure, then through the aero pack cap. So, I hope this is cool, but I don't know I'll be getting another J615. But we'll see, maybe I'll like it a lot. Like Braden Carlson from Boise, Idaho, has got a Wild Man Punisher weighing seven pounds. He's gonna fly it on that new, uh, the new Aerospike novel motor, the J615 Super Thunder Motor launch. Nice, easy recoveries this year. We probably didn't even really need to drive. I'm just gonna park in the spectator area. Uh huh. There's the launch pads. And there's my rocket. Stuck the landing. It sounded like a three. Oh, 
Punisher went a little higher than I thought it might. 4,200 feet on the J615. And you got your I-357? Huh? I-357? Yeah, I-357 is that boy. That's blown in a few years. That's not an M3700. No. <laughs> All right, guys. Pat a flinging slasher down just a tiny little bit. He's got an SS Fat Boy on pad 31. Gonna find an I-357. Point <laughs> one. <laughs> this will be fun. I'm gonna stand behind somebody. Um, <laughs> folks, watch fast because this is gonna go real quick. Going up in five, four, three, two, one, jump. <laughs> An I-540. Got a shoot release the main at 600 feet. Let's do it in five, four, three, two, one. Bye bye. Hey, time out. Who likes having the 30s pegs up here for all the J motors? Uh huh. There's a lot of weird flows here. Look up, folks. See the see the rocket coming down. That's a long enough motor, it's probably pretty good, huh? I don't know, it flies on Ford range, why wouldn't it fly? Taylor Jesse, all the way from Kansas City, Missouri, gonna fly the Punisher 4. It's a wild man kit, it's got uh, whips and chains. Why does that go? Uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but whips and chains excite me, so knock me down and tie me up and show me that you like me. That's what Taylor's written on the flight card. It, <clears throat> as far as you know, it's a wild man kit, weighs 15 pounds, gonna fly on an M3700. Hello, 15 pound rocket M3700. Watch fast, Taylor Jesse, pad 64 in five, four, three, two, one, go. Oh, that's fast. Yep, we got a fire at the 60s pads. And Matthew Myers from Olathe, Kansas, flying a monster mini bag. He's on pad 57. Flying a monster mini mag. It's a lock kit, weighs four pounds, and it's flying on an I-345. And next up, we have Taylor Jesse from Kansas City, Missouri, flying his mini mag on an I-345. He's on pad 54. So everybody, keep your eyes open on this drag race. And we are going in five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful drag race, guys. Yes, sir. Going up on a J615. Going to take me 30 minutes to build up the pad. The last anti-gravity group flight of Airfest 28. Yeah, it's been great. It's been fun. It's been great. Let's get Taylor RSOing Matt's yeah. rocket. Taylor with Excuse me, sir. What's up? So he did he it. Can't fly it. Well, he did it all by himself, that's not though. Fair. I just, I came all the way. Think it's gonna work? The car will last. Yeah. Well, okay. If his charges don't, right. the two that I made definitely will. But he did everything else himself. This time, well, let me see if my key is in David Twenty. Another one on pad thirty-one. Matthew Myers from Old Lake, Kansas, is gonna fly the Screaming Eagle. It's a lot kit, weighs seven pounds. Gonna fly a J six fifteen. Oh man, we're gonna be deaf again. Let's do it. Put it up in five, four, three, two, one. Launch. Smart Alec. Smart Alec. Yep. 
Yay! Thanks for helping us fly. This has been a great day. Thanks especially to all the volunteers for making this possible. Without you, none of this would have been necessary. <laughs> Well, guys, it's 11 o'clock. We're back at Rocky Vlogs home base. One of them, anyway. This is my house. The garage where you see me work on stuff a lot is my parents' house. That gets lost in translation a lot. At any rate, the 12-inch Punisher flew. It didn't go as high as we wanted it to. The V2 went way higher than I thought it might. Shane's one-week glass and fly. Fusion went 9,700 feet on a K motor that was way faster and hotter than we expected it to be. But it took it. And that was his first attempt at head-end dual deploy and a rocket that was not designed for it. And it worked perfectly. Overall, I'd say Airfest was a pretty successful weekend. And uh, I'm going to bed now. Thanks for tuning in.